Hello and welcome back everybody to the BioReef. Okay, today we're gonna talk about a couple of things. Uh, we're gonna talk about pH and how to improve pH in your system. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about uh, some cool experiment that I'm gonna set up to look at uh, trace element dosing in my reef tank. Uh, but first let's talk about uh, pH. So uh, pH is kind of a measure of the balance between acids and, and bases in your water. And it's a very important parameter for coral growth and calcification because there is really good evidence showing that corals grow best and calcify best at pHs above you know, 8.2 to uh, 8.4. Uh, and we do know that uh, if you actually have low pH, so uh, 7.8 and, and below, uh, long term it could lead to some consequences. And uh, if it dips even below that, then you could be getting into a situation where you're essentially dissolving your uh, calcium carbonate uh, skeletons of uh, the corals. So it's important to kind of maintain a, a, a decent and uh, pH. Uh, I like to keep it above 8 and, and anywhere between 8.2, 8.3 and all the way to 8.4, I think, are, are kind of good places if you want to maximize coral growth. Now, part of our problem with uh, having low pH in the tank, uh, there, are, there are many ways you could have low pH in the tank, but the most common one for many of us that live in, in modern houses that are really well uh, insulated is carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is what we breathe out, and it gets in the water and it turns into carbonic acid, and that reduces pH. So uh, the best way to essentially kind of manage pH is to kind of manage CO2 carbon dioxide in your water column. Now, when I designed the, the water box 180, I wanted it to go in the basement. Uh, we renovated the basement and part of the renovation involved actually insulating the entire house. So that way it's, it's a, a little bit more airtight, uh, helps us kind of with our gas bill and so on. But that led to uh, essentially lower gas exchange. And, and with us being uh, around the house and the kids being around the house over the summer, there's a lot of people in the house breathing CO2. And CO2 as a gas is heavy, it tends to sink and it essentially kind of accumulates in the basement. Uh, the net result of this is that uh, just over the past uh, month or so, my pH has been getting uh, pretty low, uh, sometimes lower than 7.8 at night. And I wanted to do something about that. I already dosed Calcwasser uh, using a calc reactor, which does help uh, improve the pH a little bit, but I, I was really trying to protect against the dips that I've been seeing at night. So I went ahead and I got an ice cap uh, carbon dioxide scrubber. And the way it works is essentially it's a canister you fill out with media and, and the media is, is uh, calcwasser in, in pellet form. And you hook one end of it to your skimmer. And uh, the way it works is that when you turn your skimmer on, it draws in air uh, to create the micro bubbles. And that air is drawn through the chamber of the calcium uh, uh, CO2 scrubber. Uh, through the media and into the skimmer and uh, the results is that the air going to the skimmer is now going to have a little bit less CO2 and it's going to reduce the uh, it's going to reduce the effects will reduce the uh, concentration of CO2 in the water and that will drive pH a little bit up. Now the trick to kind of control this for me is I essentially uh, control I am now controlling my skimmer using my pH, uh, pH meter in the apex. And there's a line of code that says if my uh, if the pH is below uh, 8.15, then the skimmer turns on. And uh, by turning on, it is essentially sucking in air that has very low CO2, adding that to the water. And that helps uh, kind of manage my uh, uh, enhanced pH a little bit. Uh, so, so far, this has been working uh, as the time of the video uh, when, I, when I'm actually recording the audio here. It's been about three weeks and the same kind of canister of media has still been working fine. And it's been doing a really good job at kind of ma maintaining the lower, the minimum of my pH per day to less than, uh, uh, to about uh, 8.15, 8.1 you know, 2, 8.13. So overall, it's been kind of helping me reach the target that I want as, as the minimum pH that I'm willing to kind of deal with. And so far, the, the corals have responded kind of really well. And and, uh, and it's, uh, uh, I was uh, not really concerned about having my skimmer be, you know, turning off for most of the day, because, uh, uh, because my nutrients are kind of low to begin with. And, and I think uh, the skimmer was kind of stripping a lot of my nutrients. I, I was, you know, constantly having to add uh, phosphates and, and nitrates to maintain uh, my nutrients at the levels that I wanted. And uh, overall, I, I think kind of running the skimmer 
uh, for less time in order to, and, and when I run it uh, to have this like pH enhancing effect so far it's been working really well for me okay so that's kind of the main news the main update on the tank the other uh, new update is I did uh, fauna marine uh, uh, ISP uh, test and uh, it turns out that essentially a lot of my water, uh, a lot of my trace elements and, and some of my macro elements are really low. Uh, so uh, I've been, you know, playing around with the idea of, of trying uh, the Moonshiner method uh, of reefing. So Moonshiner uh, was developed by uh, uh, Muller and, and Andre Muller. Uh, he's in the US. He has uh, a free guide that you could use. He sells trace elements. And also you could buy his uh, SPS color uh, and, and health uh, book. I forgot what it's called, but it has a really great like book. I think it's maybe five bucks or something that I've purchased before. Uh, so uh, what Andre has done is he kind of uses an ICP test uh, to uh, figure out what, uh, what are the elements, that, uh, the macro and, and, and trace elements that you have in your water. He has a guide for working out how to actually supplement uh, these macro and, and trace elements uh, at levels that uh, he thinks kind of works best for reef tanks and he sells the reagents for you to be able to supplement your tank uh, unfortunately he's in the u.s and and you know it, it's not it's not that it's impossible for me to get a hold of his chemicals uh, but it, uh, i i do have to kind of worry a little bit about customs and, and getting dinged uh, taxes and duties whenever anything kind of crosses uh, from the border from the u.s so instead, uh, I decided to give the fauna marine li uh, line of trace elements a try. So when you do a fauna marine test, it tells you which elements are kind of uh, low and, and which, elements, uh, which elements you need to kind of dose. And actually online, it gives you a really kind of good guide about you know, how much to add using their kind of uh, line of uh, chemicals for the uh, elements that you are missing in your tank. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try essentially running like a moonshiner method using the the guides that uh, uh the andre muller has developed and 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 the targets for trace elements that he has worked on and the moonshiner group has worked on for a while but using uh the fauna marine elements and and the fauna marine icp so i did uh document every single uh, coral i took pictures i took videos of everything and the idea is to kind of try to run the levels that uh, recommended in the moonshiner guide and and do that consistently for you know a good couple of months keeping track of the curls of the corals the uh, growth rates and, and all of that and then in in a couple of months we'll have a video where i kind of i'll show you my process of what i did uh to kind of run this uh you know hybrid moonshiner method or, or whatever you call it, it really it's just the moonshiner method it, it's a system for dosing trace elements and i'm kind of doing something similar uh and you know we'll we'll see whether it's going to have uh, um uh, it's going to make my corals kind of perk up and, and look great or whether there's going to be, you know, no obvious change. None of my, none of my videos are sponsored, by the way. I'm, I just, you know, I'm, I am curious about all of these different products that we have uh, uh, that we have available as as Aquarist. And, and obviously, uh, you know, there's a lot of claims about what works well and what doesn't work well. But often these comes from the companies that made the product so that they do have like an invested interest in, in pushing certain ideologies. Uh, so I and I know that you know this is not a fair experiment. It's not kind of replicated, but it is what it is. I'm I'm just messing around with trace element dosing. I'm gonna show you uh, if they have any effect on on my corals and and the colors and and their health. And you know you you could judge for yourself if you wanna try uh, try things. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Have fun and enjoy your reefs.